stomach bursting with envy. Kate by no means has crowds screaming like noisy star Meg what about me. Kate Middleton never had crowds screaming at her like they did at Meghan Markle, leading columnist Amanda Platel to question whether the Duchess was thinking, what about me? These days, the Duchess of Cambridge, 39, and the Duchess of Sussex, 40, have largely separate lives. Kate and Prince William live in Kensington Palace with their three children, Prince George, Princess Charlotte, and Prince Louis. Meanwhile, Meghan and Prince Harry have settled in Montecito, California with their two children, Archie Harrison and Lilibet Diana, after stepping down as senior royals last year. Although the two couples are geographically separated today, they previously attended public engagements together and were sometimes dubbed the Fab Four by the press. A new documentary series has taken a behind-the-scenes look at the narratives that have developed around the Cambridges and the Sussexes in the media. The Princes and the Press, which is available on BBC iPlayer, interviewed a range of royal reporters, commentators and other insiders about how the royal family is portrayed to the public. The programme is presented by the BBC's media editor and Radio 4 host Amol Rajan. In episode 1, he speaks to Daily Mail columnist Amanda Platel about her royal commentary on Kate and Meghan. He asks her why she wrote her December 2017 column, Can Kate Cope with Meghan Mania? She said, Kate never had crowds screaming at her. I remember one of Meghan's first events was done at Brixton at a radio station. It was like a rock star had arrived and wouldn't you just be a little bit human to think, what about me? Ms. Platel referred to the Sussex's January 2018 visit to the Represent 107.3 FM radio station in Brixton, South London. Meghan and Harry's appearance was their first public engagement of the year and only their second together as a couple. The pair, who were newly engaged at the time, were greeted with a rapturous reception by the crowds gathered outside the radio station. They were later seen chatting to youth workers, volunteers and people working at Represent. Mr Rajan also questioned Ms Platel about comparing Meghan and Kate, asking why, when one of them is up in terms of perceived popularity, the other must be down. She replied, perhaps it's just human nature. Some of the narratives about public figures reflect what goes on in people's real lives. Meghan and Harry, who tied the knot in 2018, announced last year that they were stepping down as senior members of the royal family. The Sussexes' popularity has been on a downward trajectory this year, according to research company YouGov. YouGov analysis from September claimed that the couple have suffered the most severe dip in public opinion of any royal on their list. The research was based on the responses of 1,667 adults across the UK from August 27 to 29. The number of people expressing a positive opinion about Harry dropped from 43% in April to 34% in September, according to the research. The number of people with a positive opinion about Meghan also slipped over the same period from 29% to 26%. YouGov linked the decreased positivity around the couple to their bombshell interview with Oprah Winfrey on CBS in March as well as attributing the public's reception to statements the couple had made about the Afghanistan crisis and COVID-19. The Princes and the Press is available on BBC iPlayer. The Duchess of Cambridge will reportedly be spreading holiday cheer with a concert next month. According to The Sun, Kate will host a charity Christmas carol concert at London's Westminster Abbey, where she and Prince William tied the knot a decade ago. The concert might turn out to be a royal family affair. The outlet reports that the Duke is expected to be in the audience and that the royal couple's children, Prince George, 8, Princess Charlotte, 6, and Prince Louis, 3, could even attend the event. Last year, the Duke and Duchess, along with their kids, attended a special pantomime performance of the National Lottery's Pantoland, which was held to thank key workers and their families.